I'm Naurav Patel, I'm the founder and CEO of Framework, and today we're gonna to talk about everyone's favorite topic, AI. We haven't talked a lot about AI, and part of the reason for that is there's just a ton of hype around it. And when there's hype around a topic, there tends to be a lot of noise and BS in general. And we try to avoid that. We try to focus on what's real, we try to focus on what works. And so when we talk about AI, we're gonna avoid the hypey use cases and really actually just talk through what works today on real running hardware. Let's talk about what AI is in the context of a framework laptop. One thing that I wanna call out from the start is that I'm not an AI expert, I'm not a machine learning expert, so I'm really approaching this from the perspective of a hobbyist. And so before we go deep into what I've learned so far, we're actually just gonna run something. So we're gonna open up Olama and we're gonna run Meta's Llama 3.1 model and we're just gonna ask it a question to show what AIs can actually do running locally on a framework laptop or really any consumer laptop with a discrete GPU. So we're just gonna ask it what's important about the right to repair. So an important question, very important question. What's important about the right to repair? And you can see it's just dumping out an answer pretty quickly and just quickly reading through this, it's an issue that's gained significant attention in recent years, environmental impact, cost savings, increased product lifespan. Some of these are a little iffier, job creation, economic growth. Obviously we're hiring people, so maybe we've created some jobs with this, that's great. Uh, product design and innovation. So this is actually a pretty good answer. Like it's pretty fast that it's dumping this out. It's a pretty smart answer. It's actually probably a better answer than what you would get in you know, a few minutes of Googling around in that it's just nicely summarized. Um, and so basically just as a starting point, this model running locally on a framework laptop 16 was able to answer actually a quite complex question with a reasonable answer pretty quickly. And so that's, that's the starting point. And so let's talk about what that just was. What just happened here running locally on this computer and how does it compare to maybe some of the other AIs that you've seen or used in the past like ChatGPT. So the thing about ChatGPT of course is that it is this enormous proprietary model that OpenAI has developed. There's similar models like Claude. There are other ones from Google and X and other companies. The key thing though, of course, is that these are normal models running on very expensive servers in data centers, and they are proprietary and inaccessible in the sense that if you wanted to modify it, if you wanted to inspect what's happening under the hood, you actually can't do that. If you've got concerns around privacy or security, you have to basically trust that those companies are doing the right things with your queries and your data that you're providing. And so obviously the advantage to being able to run a model locally is that you have complete control. You can trust that your data is not leaving your machine, you can modify the model, you can inspect what's happening under the hood, it's all open and available to you. And the trade-off of course is whether it's smart enough. And so as we look at those giant models like ChatGPT, they have hundreds of billion, or yeah, hundreds of billions of parameters and they're running on these multi-million dollar machines filled with NVIDIA GPUs that oftentimes you can't even get access to versus let's say the types of models that have been getting hype in the PC space, things that are running on the tiny bit of silicon area that's dedicated to NPUs on these recent generation processors. There's this massive gulf between those two ends, these giant models like ChatGPT on one side and then the tiny little models that are run on 40 to 50 tops on your processor. But the cool thing is that there is this middle ground that's starting to emerge where there are models that fit on consumer level GPUs that are actually getting smart enough to be useful. And so this model that we just ran here was Meta's latest and greatest called Llama 3.1. And they actually have multiple sizes of it that range from too big to reasonably run on a laptop to actually perfectly sized to be able to run on eight gigs of graphics memory, which is exactly what we have here with our Radeon 7700S and the Framework Laptop 16. And so we're actually just gonna look at some of these models. This is um, a site called LM Arena. There's this competition that's called the Chatbot Arena, which is this global competition between both proprietary and open large language models, basically to see which one is the smartest, which one's delivering the best responses to questions. And you can see the stack ranking that's been generated now over the course of a few years. And obviously like the, the top models, the greatest models giving the best answers are these very, very large proprietary models that have the most data going into them, that have the largest number of parameters, largest model size overall that are closed, of course. Uh, but the cool thing is that as you start to scroll down just a little bit, 
right there in the top 10, we've got an open model, this model called Llama 3.1 that Meta has been investing in now over a few generations. And the exciting thing about this is that it is open. It's available under an open license. You can actually download the entire model locally and be able to play with it. The, the license, of course, it's a, it's a little bit tricky. It is an open model in the sense that it's open and accessible, but there are some restrictions really for the sake of safety primarily. And we're not gonna address that in this video. But one thing to call out here, of course, is that as you look down this ranking, you're kind of going from like these giant models that have hundreds of billions of parameters. And as you scroll down, you start to see the models that start to get a bit smaller. Like you've got Llama 3, 70 billion. You've got Llama 3, 8 billion, which is the one that we just ran, which is still in the top 50. And actually, if you look at some of the models that are around it, these were best in class proprietary models just a generation ago. So basically this frontier in AI and machine learning is moving incredibly quickly where the top models in the world, the most advanced models that were closed and proprietary just a generation ago, open models that are small enough to run on a consumer laptop are actually competitive with them, which is just such a cool place to be. And part of why machine learning and AI actually genuinely is interesting and that there is stuff there beyond the hype. And so one cool thing, so I mentioned parameters a few times, so just to explain a bit about what parameters are. So parameters are basically the, the weights, the number of, of like items that are inside of that model. And the more parameters there are, just as a rough approximation, the smarter the model can be. And that's why you see, of course, metas, three different model sizes, the, the biggest model is the smartest, and it goes down as you shrink the model down a bit. And the number of parameters normally uh, would be, you know, let's say 16 bits per parameter, two bytes per parameter. So for this 8 billion parameter model, you need a 16 gigabyte chunk of memory to be able to run through it. You can, though, shrink down the bit depth to 8-bit or 6-bit or even smaller without like substantially making the model dumber. And so oftentimes, I'll run a model at 8-bit or even 6-bit just to make it fit. And so we can take these 8 billion parameter models and be able to fit them in 8 gigs of video memory, which is cool. And so one other thing to call out, of course, so when we ran that demo asking a question, um, so I'll just say, tell me more, um, you can see that it, it, it answers pretty quickly. And so one cool thing that makes GPUs so effective at running these models locally versus something like an NPU running uh, you know, within the silicon area of your, of your CPU or APU is that there is actually quite a lot of memory bandwidth and there's a lot of matrix multiplication capability and throughput inside of a GPU because they're crunching you know, polygons, they're crunching shaders, things that are just matrix multiplication, which very conveniently is largely what machine learning is. And so what made GPUs perfect for gaming has translated really, really well over to machine learning. And so you can see, in general, these models, these 8 billion parameter models, because of that matrix multiplication throughput and because of the memory bandwidth that's available, they can output answers basically faster than you can read them. And so like general like conversational speed, you'd need about like five to seven words per second or tokens per, spec per second for it to not feel sluggish. And with these models running on uh, 7700S like we have here, you can get up to about 30, 35 tokens per second, which is basically faster than you can read. So really actually quite usable while still delivering these answers that are pretty smart. So we've entered this kind of cool sweet spot here. Going back to focusing on real use cases instead of hype, of course, the cool thing here is that we're really just approaching this like we would any other piece of software. So you can choose what you want to run. This isn't like Copilot that's baked into your PC that you have no control over. This is literally open source software. And so the specific tool that I use that I've been playing with here showing these demos is a tool called Olama, which is from a group called Olama. And they make Olama, which is probably the easiest way to get up and running with large language models. Actually, that's literally their one sentence on their homepage, get up and running with large language models. And so I just hit the download button, installed it, it popped open Windows Terminal, and then I just ran Olama, Olama run. And the cool thing here is that they have access to, they've actually made all of these open models super, super simple to run. And so you can go to their website and just go to the models list and see Llama 3.1, Gemma 2 from Google, Mistral, which is a big AI company, I think based out of France, uh, Deepcoder, 
code Gemma, like all these different models that kind of have different specializations. And you can actually just run any one of them. So you can just say run Olama run Gemma 2. And the cool thing here is that it doesn't take any programming knowledge. It doesn't take really deep technical knowledge of any kind. It's literally just you interacting in text with this model. But Olama and a lot of the tools around this that are open source are flexible enough that if you want to go deeper as a developer or tinkerer, you can go in and write uh, you know, Python interfaces or other interfaces to be able to like download data or have the model interact with the internet or interact with data on your machine. Again, all that you control in a way that you can see the code or write the code, modify the model if you want to, and have complete ownership over without having to wonder what's happening with your data or what's happening out in the cloud. So really cool stuff happening locally these days. So what else can you do with large language models? I've been kind of treating it a bit like Google, but you can go a bit deeper. You know, you can actually be friends with your virtual friend in your framework laptop. Um, and so we can pick a couple of other examples, like maybe we ask Llama 3.1, what's the best burrito in San Francisco? And just see. Um, yeah, and it's just dumping out this answer super quickly. So I, I live in San Francisco. I love burritos. And I have to say, these are pretty good answers, actually. <laughs> these, these, are good, these are good burritos. They got a, a good, the stack ranking, of course, is controversial. But the specific few that they picked, they are good, good burritos. We've been focused on large language models so far, which are basically models that you can feed text into. It'll crunch it and then output an answer back as text. But as we look at machine learning and AI, some of the coolest stuff happening goes outside of text, outside of LLMs, and into other types of models. And so one of the cool things about Olama is that there's actually vision support in that you can load in a model that you can feed an image, and the model will basically parse the image, understanding what's happening there. And then you can interact with the model and ask it questions and kind of interrogate it about the image or have a conversation that's based on the image. And so I'm going to download an image. I just picked this one off of our website. It is now just downloaded. And I'm going to run this model that's called Lava. And actually, I'm going to run a variant of it that's called Lava Llama 3, which uh, uses Meta's Llama 3 in combination with Lava to actually give some pretty good results. And so I'm just going to feed it this image um, that is conveniently called image.png. And I'm just going to ask it, what? in this image, and we're going to see how smart it is. So it parsed it. So in this image, a young woman is engrossed in her work in a silver what? A silver MacBook laptop. Hold on. Um, that's not a MacBook. Other than that, it was pretty accurate. So behind her, there's a window that offers a serene view of lush green plants outside, in addition to the ambience. Um, seem, the woman seems to be enjoying her work. I'm, I think she probably was. Um, wow, this is even worse. So I, I told it that's not a MacBook. It thinks it's an Acer Aspire or a Toshiba satellite. I don't even know what those are. <laughs> so one, one key factor here is that there is actually a knowledge cutoff because this model is not touching the internet. It is running entirely locally. So it actually only has knowledge of whatever was baked in at the point in time that it was fed that data to crunch into and train that model. Obviously, that model has no knowledge of what Framework is as a company. It might have even been trained before Framework existed as a company. So unfortunately, we can't ask it about Framework Laptop. We can only ask it about Acer, Aspire, Toshiba, Satellite, or MacBook. It's OK, though. I'm not offended by Lava, Llama 3. In the future, of course, these models will know a bit more about the right to repair and a bit more about framework, hopefully. There's other cool stuff you can do too, like image generation. There are models called uh, Stable Diffusion. There's a newer one called Flux that are these open image generation models. They are quite a bit more complex to set up, so we're not going to play with them today. But they have actually gotten a lot better on AMD. Historically, they've been largely NVIDIA focused in terms of what has been open to run locally on a laptop or on a desktop. AMD has been closing the gap really, really quickly with their Rockham framework. And so as you can see, like with Olam, it just runs straight out of the box. With some of the image generation stuff, it takes a little bit more work, but it is getting there pretty quickly. And so, of course, this was the first time we've talked about AI. It's the first time we've talked about machine learning. But the state of the art is advancing really quickly. The frontier is just moving incredibly fast. So this is something that we're definitely going to be talking more about as we go. Write me a script 
for a YouTube video. Video explaining how to run large language models locally on a laptop. Here's the script. Oh wow, so an intro, 30 second intro. Hey there tech enthusiasts, welcome back to the Framework YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's been making waves in the tech community, running large language models locally on your laptop. Yeah, you heard that right. With the rise of AI and machine learning, having a powerful language model at your fingertips, oh my God, it's writing faster than I can read and scrolling. Powerful language model at your fingertips can be super useful for developers, researchers, even hobbyists like ourselves. So let's dive into it. And this is still going. So we've got a 12 minute script that ends with, oh, closing shot with a friendly smile. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll catch you in the next video.